The reason this whole thing came about was that we'd, um, we'd done the Chronicles album. It was something that we needed to do to just get the band some notice from the public again. All the vocals have had to change and to a degree, you know, the, some of the arrangements have changed. It was basically um, me that sort of beavered away and gnawed at everyone's ankles to actually try and get it all going. Over Christmas, I started thinking, well, we really should be writing some songs for the band, getting some songs up. Paul, obviously, Paul, their singer died uh, years ago, and I was hustling Ian to, I, I said, you should reform the band. I got a call from Ash and he said, uh, how do you fancy it? And I said, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to, give it a go. It was only after a couple of, year, of years of Dave, our drummer, badgering me to hell. We've got to put the man back, we've got to put the man back. There has been plenty of talk about trying to get uh, new stuff and creating a new album. We got asked by an agent on the back of the release of Chronicles, would you consider going on the road again? I took over from Noddy Holder in Slade for about 16 years and um, strangely enough when, uh, when I quit Slade um, I was immediately offered a record deal in the States so I, I'm now signed to a company called Spectra Records in the USA and uh, I have an album out, in, it's on Amazon I think, and it's called uh, Travelling Soul. I, I really miss being on stage. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's much better than being in a studio which is clinical and there's no, it, there's no audience. I mean, an audience is, come on, we're there to show off, you know. Yeah. And you've got to have a bunch of people to show up to. There are some really high points. And it's funny how even though you get to this age, you will never change. People do not change. So you find yourself going through the same high school crap that you went through, you know, in 1980. Big family, everybody's uh, just that healthy side of crazy, and uh, therefore I fit in perfectly. I won't hold you down. 
Well, yeah. this tour is slightly different because we put a lot of new stuff in that we didn't really consider before. And it, it's, they're really good songs. And it's some of those good new songs that I'd like to see re-recorded and done again. Hopefully it's going to go as well as the other two have gone. You know, this is a progression thing. It's something that's, that's growing with every time we do it. And we're all bonding together really closely and it's working very well. It's always a question of style. You have to look at um, material in terms of style and what is the sad cafe um, gestalt, if you like, what, what, what makes them sad cafe. And if you've got an idea that um, kind of flows into that or could lend itself to that, then that's obviously the way to go. You know? mm. And that, that's just the way I look at what I'm doing at the moment. If it's um, if I can, it's like you have to picture the band actually doing it, you know. And if it feels comfortable in your head, then it's worth a try, you know. And any particular anecdotes you can tell us about backstage anecdotes about the band? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not no. No. I, I. I would fear no. They say um, no photographs for security reasons. Social security reason. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, we're, we're, we're just little kittens. We're all little kittens in our box. And when we get out of our box and go on stage, we run around and then all get back in the box. I, I actually I'm enjoying it now more than I did when I was in the band in the early days. Good. Yeah, because I'm more grounded. And I play for the song and I play for the, for the crowd more than I play for myself. We didn't want to do go down the replacement route. We wanted to... Um, Try and share the vocals between all the guys and not, you know, try and pay homage. We asked loads of guys like Paul Carrick and Peter Cox out of Go West and uh, Chris Thompson out of Manfred Mann and there and they were all they were all a bit sort of mm. those boots are too big to fill really. So we uh, we said sort of, why don't we just share it around and uh, try and go go an alternative route. And of course, things without Paul had to change vocally. Of course, yeah. I mean, the one thing we said from the outset, we will never try and replace him because you couldn't. Just a huge, huge persona. Um, so what we did was we enlisted um, Steve Worley, who goes right back with, with Ian, with Ian Wilson, to uh, a band called Greasy Bear. Uh, we enlisted um, Sue Quinn, and now Sue wrote uh, Heart on the uh, Politics of Existing album and she sung on various stuff and, and worked with, again, worked with us in the studios. Um, and Simon, Simon Waggett, had worked on a mandala band with Ashley. And when we knew we were going to be looking for a keyboard player, Ashley said, well, you know, you need to get Simon. So we then split the vocals between Ian, Sue, um, Steve, and Ashley, and Ashley had never done lead vocals until he moved over to Denmark. We have to cater and 
write the stuff we like. We got to write what we like, and then I think other people will too. So far, my record has met everyone that's heard it has been saying we miss this kind of stuff, you know, R and B with horns on it and swamp funk stuff. And so um, we can do the same, but we should be the new cafe. We shouldn't try and be the old side cafe. I think we should move on. Well, when we played the Jam House uh, last year in, in Birmingham, Lee Benson, who's a really good friend of mine, who runs this gallery, uh, came to see us. And he said to me afterwards, he says, I want you guys to play in my gallery. How can we do it? And when we were rehearsing for our last set of gigs, uh, we, we did it acoustically. It worked so well. We did it in, in Sue and Ian's front room. And we thought, this could really work. So I contacted Lee said to him did he fancy it and he said absolutely when can we do it um, and what I did was we only advertised it on the website so the only people who were here are fans are people who actually follow us on Facebook on Twitter and, and on our website and so we, we just we just sold it through that and amazingly uh, we only allocated a certain amount of tickets we sold it out straight away I think the rest speaks for itself. I mean, it's such a buzz tonight. Just the fact that we're not having to do a massive stage performance and we could concentrate on playing, getting the harmonies together. I think we, we as a unit worked so much better for, than we have done for a long time. I would like to think so. Um, it would open a whole new area for us. Uh, I've already been approached to do a, a big acoustic festival next year for us. So, yeah, and why not? I mean, it, it, it's one of our plans, I think. We, we would like to record an album of what we've just done. And, uh, and I think it will give a fresh look at some of the songs that the band have got, which are, which are great songs, but done in a completely fresh way.
I hope to do is that we can do more touring. I, I want to, well, we all do really. We want to do some new stuff, some more new recording, new songs. I've got some, Ashley's got some, Steve's got a few, Sue's got a few. Uh, I'm sure Simon's got a few. Um, just bring it all together and put it into, into the studio and then then tour that. I think we've quite, you know, we've established the fact that, you know, Sad Cafe is back and, and we'll play the old songs. Um, but yeah, we want to do so. We want to get new product out, as they say. Yeah. Tell us about the song that you did compose. Why, why do you love me like you do? Yeah, well, it had two. That was the title they gave it in America for some strange reason, but it was always titled Heart. That's how I always, that's, that's what it was when it was written. And it's one we keep meaning to redo because it was never right. There was never, my original demo was actually quite different. And Paul sang the original demo that we recorded at Pluto in my key. So he's, he's actually really on the top of the ceiling there when he's singing it. And uh, it really needs some attention. It needs some good, strong focus to, to bring it back again. But I'd like, to, I'd like us to do that. And they're all very keen to redo it again. I hope so, yeah, we're all sort of um, browbeating each other for material at the moment. Ashley's got some new material and Sue and uh, Ian have got uh, stuff in the pipeline. But we do need new new product. <laughs> Ash, Ash, sorry, Ashley's got some uh, some really nice ideas. He's just he's, uh, written a great tune in it and it's called The Ballad of the Sad Cafe. Um, a little bit different in style, I guess, from Sad Cafe. And it, so to me, it just sounds like you know, this is sacrifice has moved on, you know. If there was more poster coverage and, and some new stuff to listen to, and if the new stuff they really like, we miss the songs from that time. That's our demographic, 40 to 70 now, if you like. We have to cater and write the stuff we like. We gotta write what we like, and then I think other people will too. In this digital age, of course, it all happens at home. If you've got an idea, just email it across, stick it in a Dropbox. Everyone can listen, contribute, you know, because we've all got our own sort of either logic or pro tools or whatever it is that anyone uses. Like Ash will send me some stuff, I'll do it at home, send it back to him, but ultimately you want to be there as a unit together. things that we obviously have had to embrace is social media. Um, the whole scene regarding promoting gigs has changed completely. Um, a lot of promoters, in name only, they don't actually promote anything, they, they sell you to a venue. Um, particularly council room venues have a budget that they have to spend, they will book you in, and then they'll just put a load of leaflets in reception but they won't actually go out and physically promote you. They don't put posters up anymore. So a lot of these promoters are now saying, well, you, you need to do it via social media. Well, we do have Facebook, and our Facebook is actually quite a, a vibrant Facebook. I mean, this week alone, I just received a thing from them, and it said that our rating has gone up 1,300% from last week. Primarily because we're posting that we're doing gigs and our fans are responding to us. So all of a sudden there's a lot of traffic going through it.
changed my life, yeah, and I teach it now, and uh, I'm a vocal coach, and uh, I teach music, and gig as much as I can, and I'm still writing all the time. Um, I co-wrote a, a, a song with John Blackwell, who's Prince's drummer, and I sang on his album, and that was, that was great, that was a couple of years ago. And so I, every so often, some things, really nice things come along, and, and you embrace them, and you do them, and I'm very thankful. Very, very thankful. This true feeling of fellowship, it's an old-fashioned word, but it really does come into play when you talk about vocal harmony. Um, and my benchmark is like, if it makes the hair stand up on your neck when you're doing it, that's as close to it as you can get, I think. We, what we've done this time, more than we never did it before, is we actually go and meet and greet after the show. Uh, previously, we'd we'd finish the gig, we'd sit in the dressing room, we'd jump on the bus. If they managed to catch us in that time, they were lucky, but we never made that effort. This time, we are making an effort. We're selling merchandise, so you know we want, they want to see a face and they want us to sign programs and stuff. These two girls came up to me, and one of them gave me a really big bear hug, and she said, do you know something, Des? You've just made a crap year great. And it, it was sort of quite humbling, really, because what you forget is, those people go way, way back and they identify parts of their life with what you've done. They will tell you what they were doing when Every Day Hurts was released. They will tell you how they all used to get together and, and, and travel around. There was a big gang of girls used to follow us about and they lived all over the country. And so some of them would stay in that house and then they'd all go up and stay in, and there's always somewhere for them to stay right across the country. Uh, and it was a, an immensely loyal following that are still there. Yeah.